Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Danny. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long journey since Ubiquiti released the Edge Router version 2. But for those of us eagerly awaiting innovation, it feels like an eternity. Arrival of Edge Router version 3 after years of anticipation and a prolonged release candidate phase marks a significant milestone that we're thrilled to finally celebrate. These devices used to be and to some extent some are the cornerstone of a lot of networking infrastructures. Now without beating around the bush too much, I will be reviewing the interface and some of the changes. I will not be going over uh, the official statement here from Ubiquiti with all the fixes and still outstanding bugs. I will leave a link below for you to review. So let's begin. Now for those of you who've watched my previous video, which was probably six or eight months ago now, uh, I've had a lot of positive feedback for the v uh, V3 and how people are looking forward to it finally releasing. Some of the functions in this release that make a big difference for some people is WireGuard, which uh, I'm pretty sure everybody welcomes. Now I've brought out the equipment that I used for the original video, connected it all up, and that that's what we'll be uh, using to go over this. Now I do have a link to UISP, uh, but I'm not going to be updating it from here. I will go through the interface and show you uh, how to update it. Now if you are on version 2 still, and we're waiting to upgrade to version 3, some of this will be the same. Now obviously if you're using UISP you can just hit the update button but as always make sure you have a, a backup of your config before you do that. Uh, for everybody else we're just going to go to the interface and start upgrading it here. Now I've already gone uh, to the Ubiquiti website and down here you can find the links for the appropriate hardware. Now we are using an ER12. I think this is an ER12P. Actually, I think I've got one of each, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing today. Now, if you're familiar with the V2, uh, you will know how to get to the systems. I'm not going to roll these back to V2 just to show you where to update it. Uh, I'm sure you can figure that out if you're a user of the edge router range. So in this case, we're just going to go to system. Uh, since this is not an essential device for me, I'm going to uh, just go here, upload system image. I'm just going to select a downloaded file. And uh, if any of you watched the previous video, uh, there used to be an error when updating from version 2 to version 3 uh, release candidate 9, which is what we're on, where this will be uploading and then it will error or timeout. Uh, it was still perfectly fine, you just needed to restart your router and give it a minute and it would uh, upgrade. Okay, that took on this device maybe 15 seconds. So I'm just going to hit restart. And now I have reconnected myself to go purely via the edge router. So all my traffic goes through that, so I will be losing internet, but that's not important right now. Uh, now, if you are using the Edge Router X uh, series or the more entry-level units, uh, there is some notes you should probably refer to. You should read uh, known bugs, etc. Uh, as some of the less powerful units might have some issues, so. Uh, please read the official uh, official statement from Ubiquiti. So let's see if that router has updated yet. Okay, and welcome back. Now I'm not sure what the issue is, maybe because it was a release candidate, but the edge router, I waited probably about 10 minutes in the end, I had to restart it. Uh, manually because the restart that I clicked didn't do anything. Now the, the edge router in switch mode, which is what this one is, 
uh, I had no problem. It updated straight away, restarted, and it was up and running. So just a side note, uh, wait, as always with firmware, make sure you wait long enough. And that's why it's a little gap in my video here. So yeah, now we're at version three. If you have watched the release candidate version three uh, from memory, or at least based on what I read here, it's not really much, if anything, changed. It would be all minimal stuff. Uh, but I'm gonna skip through the interfaces regardless. Now it is a huge difference between V2 and V3. Uh, they're kind of planets apart, as in the interface is just completely different. So if uh, you wanna compare, probably bring up the V2 video I released last year. Okay. Now let's start going over the interface. Now from V2 to V3, I don't recall every single bit that's different. Uh, this interface here at the top is overhauled a little bit. Uh, a lot of these is, you know, just made uh, more pretty looking. Uh, most of the interface buttons used to be at the top, in the top bar. Now they've all been moved to the left side here in V3. Uh, now there is some Uh, some bugs, if I read that correctly, some uh, for some devices where the DPI uh, is not working correctly or it has some issues, but uh, again, I may have misread that. Now, this is just traffic uh, analysis. By default, this is disabled. In this case, uh, it has been enabled from the previous video. I'm just going to blaze over the interface so you guys can compare and see what's there. Uh, OSPF, whoever uses that, uh, would be a, a number of use that are in the industry. Uh, I'm not going to explain what most of these are because if you're using device, uh, this device, you should know what they are. Um, so firewall rules, they have made them a little bit more uh, easy from V2 to V3. Uh, you have a bit more flexibility, but a lot of it is is basically identical. Uh, with the V2, it was a little bit flaky sometimes when you apply settings. Uh, from what I've read, with the V3 should be uh, much more spot on. Now, services, DHCP, uh, nothing really new here, looks about the same if you ask me. Uh, DNS, okay, I don't recall having the V2 having DIN DNS. I might be wrong, I've never used it, but I don't recall it having it. Uh, now in V3, apparently they fixed up a few issues with PPPoE uh, for the internet connection type. Now, one of the big differences in V3 is going to be the VPN. So this is the big one. Now, I have not deployed it yet, uh, but it looks fairly standard. WireGuard configuration default port. You got your private and public keys. Okay, this is where you make your peers, I guess. So... Okay, it's probably because I haven't provided the, the points, but it looks like it actually generates a, a config for you, which is very nice. I did not expect that from them, uh, but this looks very capable. Uh, very nice. I think a lot of you are particularly looking forward to the WireGuard add-on. Uh, now the side-to-side, -side, uh, I think it's the same. Uh, PPTP is phased out. I mean, it's still here, but it's a legacy thing and you shouldn't be using it. So you're stuck with WireGuard or IPsec. Uh, IPsec is probably still very big in, in industry with WireGuard kind of getting up there these days. Now the quality of service stuff uh, is about the same. Now, I do not recall it being called smart queues in the V2, but I, it has been a couple of years since I used the V2 version. And the V3, I didn't really have any anyone in production. So uh, here's the basic interface for the QoS. 
Okay, legend instructions. Nice. Add Q. Okay. Now, I might be wrong, but this look looks like it's got way more uh, uh, settings predefined. I'm pretty sure you had to manually nominate this in the past. Again, might be, I might be wrong. Uh, so you tell us below. Uh, users, yep, no, nothing, nothing different here. Uh, all the same. Uh, now this is the config tree. It looks like they have nuked it completely. So that is nice to see in here. Uh, oddly enough, WireGuard is not in the config tree. And they've got L2TP in here, which is IPsec, PPPoE. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, config tree, uh, this is where you can probably do a little bit more, or it's more exposed than you can from the interface. The config tree should be on par with what you can do in the command prompt, technically. Uh, so this is for the guys that want to use the interface. Okay, this looks all... Again, there might be something... Uh, interface open VPN. Uh, might be something in here new. Uh, let's actually look at the wizards. Now, since this was uh, the uh, edge router from the previous video, I'm not going to rerun these wizards. We're just going to skip through them. Uh, so you can see what they look like. Uh, I'm going to assume it forces you to make a complex password here, uh, which is how I ended up with that complex username and password for here. Uh, so this is interesting. I personally don't have a problem with reporting back if it's going to make everything better. Oh, I hope that didn't mess anything up. Uh, load balancing. Okay. That's actually nice. It looks like you can uh, do a lot of things. That's two ports, LAN. Switch, okay, that all makes sense. Load balancing two. Okay, I like the interfaces as they are now, but I think this is about the same from the release candidate version. Uh, again, if you're curious, I'm pretty sure we went over these interfaces in the uh, release candidate nine, which is hard to believe. Oof, December or January, whenever I released that video. But it's been out, out for a while. Now the second device I've basically got in switch mode, uh, which means most of this functionality uh, gets disabled. And it's literally a switch. You can still do everything. You can still do VLANs. Uh, it just does not utilize the... Uh, sorry, it does not utilize the... Uh, a routing capability. Uh, I've just patched myself in here. Let's see if we can get some traffic flowing uh, through these. Okay. This is purely so we can get some numbers happening. So I'm patched in here. I'm wondering if if the traffic analysis actually reveals anything because I'm plugged in the switch. Uh, that's the only reason I'm running this. So apparently not. So everything must be going through the main switch. Okay. Uh, sorry, main router. It's fine. Now I'm not going to go through the interfaces on the left. They're, they are going to be identical. Uh, they are basically disabled in switch mode, but I thought I highlight that quickly uh, before we proceed. So van to LAN, okay.
okay sorry about that okay um so yeah the rest of this interface looks pretty much identical i'm gonna say uh nothing really crazy in here uh, i don't recall the dns host names but again i might be wrong upmp uh, vpn status so all of this looks identical uh, now I accidentally applied uh, a config while I was clicking around without noticing. Yeah, so I had to restart uh, the switch and the edge router. So I think when I was clicking in here, I accidentally clicked something to apply. Uh, so I got dropped off, but again, um, that's fine. Look, uh, this is version three of the Edge Router series. Uh, this is the Edge Router 12. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with how the Edge Router range works, they come in two different CPU uh, models. Uh, so you'll probably want to watch uh, my previous video because it goes through over that, or at least uh, in the description, you should find links to to the info and how they're functioning. Uh, but the primary difference is the more beefier CPU uh, can actually do hardware everything, uh, where the more entry level CPU does a lot of the things in software. Uh, with the better CPU, you can have each port as an individual entity. Uh, with a more entry level CPU version, uh, some of the ports are soft mapped so that means that the traffic goes through all the ports and it's kind of a little bit uh it's not that great i mean it works for most cases uh, but not if you're going to try to push the one gig on every port so all right now i've mumbled on enough now this is the Edge Router 12. This is the Edge Router v3 firmware that has just been released according to this 18 days ago. So just short of three weeks ago. And they might still have a few bugs because you can see here known issues. There's a few little things. Uh, so offloading is an issue. I mentioned this at the start. Uh, it's still a known issue which they're sorting out and then the DPI counters are sometimes reporting wrong. Again, so I'm sure there's going to be more updates coming in the you know next couple of weeks, couple of months. And uh, that is it. Now uh, let me know what you think about the edge router. Are you still using it? Uh, what are you looking forward in the V3? Uh, do you see a reason to upgrade your current setup to something newer from the Ubiquiti range? Or um, are you thinking that what you got is still pretty good? Now, personally, to be honest, the, these edge routers, they're rock solid. They just work. They're set and forget once they're in place. Uh, they literally just work and work and work. And uh, they're definitely workhorses. Now we use these in the data center for quite a while. They're very capable of at routing a huge amount of traffic. And they're very good at, you know, not as good as a PF sense, but they're very good at uh, routing uh, port to port, etc. So what are your thoughts on this? Uh, are you still using it? Are you looking forward to V3? Have you already updated to V3? Uh, when did you hear about V3? And how did you hear about V3? I personally checked this about a month ago, maybe less, and I didn't see it. And then somebody in my comments left a comment uh, uh, that said uh, they've just released V3 the other day, official. And uh, that is why I'm on this video, hoping to get it out today. So more people will be eager to check it out and see if they want to upgrade. Again, hope to see you soon and looking forward to reading your comments below. Have a good day. Bye.